Does the traditional one also come with dry ice? Probably not. <laughs> Watch what they do. Watch what they do. In the show. Yesterday, we were just eating $3 like ban mian. And then now we're here and it's still all Chinese. So I think that to me yeah. is incredible. Well, I to interrupt, but I, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. The first Chinese restaurant in America opened up 171 years ago, and in some ways, things haven't really changed. To this day, most people view the cuisine as delicious, cheap, and fast. Utilitarian, with bare bones decor, and cold but effective customer service. But in 2020, Chinese food is going through a fancification in Western countries, and New York City is at the heart of it. Today, we're checking out three new Chinese spots where the bill would come out anywhere from 50 to 150 a person, from the ancient to the opulent to the high Piece. Will these places change how Chinese food is viewed? Let's find out. All right, you guys, we're in the East Village right now, and I would say that this neighborhood for all types of Asian food is incredibly progressive, uh -huh. but particularly for Chinese food, we're in front of Chili. This is a very strong concept restaurant. This is a brand new Chinese restaurant, and its decor is based off of a small village in the Zhejiang area during the Song Dynasty. That's very specific. Incredibly specific. So it's going to transport us to a whole different place, and the food is really great, and the service is top notch. There's just not a lot of Chinese restaurants like this. It's 2020. Be prepared to see some things from Chinese food and Chinese restaurants that you have never seen before. Let's check it out. Chili is a concept restaurant based off Hangzhou circa 1000 AD, the peak of the Song Dynasty. To really appreciate this spot, you gotta do a little research. What kind of pudding is this again? This is a milk tea. Milk tea like pudding. milk pudding. Milk yeah, pudding. it has a little bit of the yellow wine there as well. I'm just gonna start off the meal. We have a nice spread starting here, but this is milk pudding with yellow wine and milk tea. Mmm, so good, so good. So we're gonna start off with the Longjing shrimp. This is lightly poached and it just has a little bit of dipping sauce. So it's a very, very clean dish. Like much Shanghainese food should be. Longjing shrimp. Mmm. This is a banger. This mm. is a five out of five coming out of the gate, opening up, Andrew. That's a great dish to start off. And I just think that really embodies like the beauty of Shanghainese cuisine and Southern cuisine in general, where it's just super light oh. and it lets the ingredients Andrew, shine. Andrew, we're a quarter Shanghainese, but we can't let Shanghai get all the credit for the region. Hangzhou, Andrew, was a big dog before Shanghai was a big dog. Well, leading on to this dish, which is not only heavily debated between me and you, but it's also called Wuxi Smokefish or Shanghainese Smokefish. Mmm, that was good. That's good, man. Very thick and heavy, sweet and sour sauce on it, but it's very dark. And the fish is cooked perfectly. It's a little bit fried. So the outside is quite crispy, but the inside is still really soft. Crystal shrimp and wuxi smoked fish and the best versions that I've ever had in my life have both been here at Chili. Mm. Here's the test standard because I actually like wine chicken, Tui Ji. Mm -hmm. I like drunken chicken, so we shall see. Wow, heavy wine flavor. That yellow wine is delicious right now. It's almost like a wine slash chicken broth mixture. Okay, that was good, but it was my favorite one I've ever had. I'm going back to the smoked fish. Mmm. Yo. You are a smoked fish fiend. fiend. Going on to their little appetizer plates, David, here we actually have a cold dish that comes with the meal. It's edamame and radishes, and I know a lot of people think that this is pickled, but it's actually stir-fried and then chilled. So good. This is a triple crisp. How special dim sum. There's a little bit of chocolate in the one up. This is a shredded daikon. This is a duran cake. Mmm. You can taste the charcoal too. It was good. Warm, crispy, lightly sweet. Mm. Like that a lot. I'm going in on the shredded daikon. Dave, I've never had a shredded daikon dim sum dumpling before. First time ever. Let's go. Last but not least, walnut shaped like a real walnut, but inside it was a pastry walnut. I like that one. Low key. In this walnut dumpling right here, they almost take all the best parts of the honey walnut prawn, which is basically the sweet walnut, and they put it into here. This is Chenlong's favorite yield. I'm about to wrap it up like a picking duck sauce. You gotta get all that sauce on there. That's the chef's recommendation, get all the sauce in there. Get a little bit of cucumber, a little bit of scallion. Wrap it up. And 
ready to serve. This is the eel. So she said eat the eel like Peking duck, but you know how they're eating Peking duck in China right now. Guys. <laughs> Pretty good. I can't remember the last time I had piping hot eel. So good. And we are taking a look at some Zhe Thais from the Zhejiang region that I have actually never had before. David, we've never had really fish and pork in the same dish. This is some real surf and turf right here. Let's go. Wow. Oh, that's interesting. I'd almost say like the pork patty almost in a way enhances the croaker. Mmm. You can notice that food here is not spicy. And having hot sauce would not be fitting with the traditional nature of the Song Dynasty based in Hangzhou. Going into our next two dishes, we have the Hong Xiao Rou and the garlic loofah. Here we go, David. Hong Xiao Rou with abalone. They captured the essence of the region, man. What can I say? When you're in Shanghai and you're eating at fancy restaurants, this is more of the food that they serve. Oh, y'all don't know what I've been working on this whole time. Please, I'm eating everything like Peking duck today. This is a pork belly Peking duck wrap. You guys, this is probably the biggest sleeper dish in her. This is actually a gourd that has been cut diagonally, so it's got the long noodle strips. It's stir fried loofah. Dude, is loofah in season? Because this tastes so on point. The flavor's coming through. When she said it's like a cucumber, zucchini, slash, a uh, bitter melon mix, that's definitely true, but I would say even less on the bitter melon. For me, still to this point, the Longjing shrimp was like a six out of five. This loofah is a six out of five. You're not even making sense, bro. That's off the scale. How can something be more than 100%? I wouldn't say this is traditional Shanghainese. This is just more innovative dish that we made. Okay. Yeah, it's a sticky rice pancake roll with peanuts and brown sugar. Dessert has arrived here at Chili. What are we looking at? Yeah, this is the Meilin kanji, man. This, I wish we had this every time. Mm. Whoa. I it's more like a sweet, milky kanji with goji berries. Mmm, it's really good. Very Yum. light, not too sweet, not too heavy. And last but not least, the brown sugar peanut rice rolls. I'm just gonna rip it off and eat it like this. Wow, I might have to dip it in the mailing kanji right here. Mmm. My biggest things you must get, you gotta get the milk tea with the pudding. You gotta get the Lungjing shrimp, you gotta get the loofah, and you gotta get the kanji. Let me just throw it in there. Smoked fish has the best wuxi smoked fish I've ever had. Chili takes you back to a time period a thousand years ago, and the food is executed with royal precision. Definitely worth a visit. But our next spot, Hutong, first popped up in Hong Kong, belonging to an international restaurant group. They bring a futuristic, art deco, crazy rich Asians part two vibe. But will the food live up to the opulent decor? Let's see. There's probably not a single restaurant that better exemplifies where Chinese food is headed to than Hutong. To be here in the Bloomberg building, Le Cirque, 59th Street, Midtown, Andrew. I'm looking forward to trying the food, but I can tell you one thing, we might be underdressed. Let's, Let's head, head to Hutong. We got the wagyu beef meal feu. It's braised wagyu beef, obviously. The little uh, black pepper sauce and braised onion. Andrew, we're here at Hutong, not in a Hutong. Those were the alleyways between Shi Hu Yuan. And Hutong is referring to those kind of old living styles in Beijing, but obviously this is not an old living style. So as amazing as all their dishes here, they are very well known for their dim sum. So let's start off. This is like black pepper beef inside of a dim sum, right? Essentially a very layered and flaky fried dumpling with Wagyu beef, black pepper, and onions. You guys, they got a crazy system back there. These have been soaking in rosé champagne. Uh, uh, so here's how I'm gonna eat this, David. I'm gonna take half a bite first without dipping it into chili oil or soy you sauce. Taste. You taste it, man. You can taste it's got that, that little champagne yeah, bite. Yeah. Guys, this is always that piece of the lobster that you always are trying to get out of the tail anyways, you know, at the Chinese restaurant when they chop it up. Wow, that was really good. It's like a 12 out of 10, man. We have the vegetarian option. Very rarely do you find a vegetarian dumpling that's so leafy and packed together. That was really good. Spicy cod dumpling. I love about this cod dumpling is in the northern China, especially along the coast, they eat a lot of fish dumplings. Traditional Cantonese dim sum spots, you don't get that many fish dumplings. Spicy cod bao with a very tight belt. Mm. 
This is super savory and uh, right. fragrant on the inside, but it's kind of like wrapped in a, uh, almost like a fluffy Shenzhen bao. And Ooh. this is almost like a Shaolong bao stuffed version, except obviously with a little bit of the Sichuan mayo on top. This is like a little bit of a fusion right here. And I'm looking at uh, the squid flower. This is probably one of the most interesting things, Andrew. It's almost like a reinvention of a Shreju Yu. Squid flower. Oh wow, they're taking influences and taking almost like the best of other regions. And they're able to blend it in with kind of like Beijing royal attitude. I would say that this is the closest to lobster I've ever had a shrimp taste. Mala shrimp? Yo, that was one of the best mala shrimps I have ever had. And mm. I've had mala shrimp like a lot lately. I've probably mm. had this dish five times in the last month. This was easily the best one. Let's get into this, uh, the red lantern, wow. Andrew. I thought it was chicken pieces yeah. at first, but it's actually gigantic soft shell crabs here. Ooh. It comes in an amazing presentation almost looks like something that came from Beijing hundreds of years ago. Here it is at hotel. Wow. I feel like after I bite into that, it's just like disappearing in my mouth. No. It's just falling apart. I never had anything like that before, honestly. Very good. A great palate cleanser here, David, is the lettuce hearts, AKA thinly sliced asparagus. I do certainly feel some of the royal sort of imperial techniques being used. Some people might not be super familiar with this. Only like certain tiers of people in Beijing or have the availability to eat this food. Mm -hmm. Thinly slicing the asparagus like that, it's like paper thin, I've never had that. Andrew, we are taking a look at the halibut tomato mm. noodle soup. Andrew, I do see the northern influence in this dish because fan xie chao dan, tomato is such a popular soup, whether it's in hot pot broth or just, you know, kind of a lunch soup. Mmm, I love this soup. It's like a little bit spicy, but kind of very, very savory. Um, very rich. And it's got the rice noodles, David, like the Yunnan rice noodles right here, so they're a little bit chewy. I actually would go ahead and put this as the favorite thing that I've had so far. Mm. Mm. That's what I came for. I just, you know, when you go to these fancy restaurants, you're just looking for one dish that shuts the game down. So this is the Chinese lantern. It's complement a lot of our dishes as well. Wow. This is our last savory dish, the squash soup with king crab. This is like a savory salted egg yolk soup. This is the purest distillation I've had of this flavor. It's crazy. And this might be the first time this has ever happened. So the balanced oil actually is just like um, the idea from the breakfast of the Chinese. So you eat a bao with the dao zhen, which is the soy milk. The bao is uh, sesame mousse that with the salty caramel inside with a piece of the uh, sesame cake on the bottom. You're the guest. That's gonna be a fine. All right, Khan, the chef is from Shanghai and she invented this dessert. It looks like a bao, but it's very much uh, not a bao, guys. Let's go. Mmm. I like that a lot. It's not too sweet. That was so good. I'm liking that a lot. You guys gotta try it, man. This is like, and then they give you an extra dollop soy milk ice cream right here. Let's go in on it. It's not very common to find soy milk ice cream anyways. Wow. You guys are doing so much inventive stuff and huge shout out to you. I do think a lot of what you're getting is the innovative dishes, the dishes that you've never had before. You're also getting the ambiance, you're getting the service. Good restaurants in Chinatown are going to be spending a lot of time giving you quality ingredients as well. I mean, the presentation here is gonna be on the next level. Hutong is really far from any Asian enclave, but it definitely has its crowd and some very unique dishes. It is in the Bloomberg building after all. So if Chile takes you back in time, Hutong reimagines a dynastic future. So let's go back to the East Village to Hulu, which feels like an industrial pop art gallery where all the patrons wear streetwear. It's definitely a vibe that a lot of places try to pull off but can't do tastefully. I think Hulu might have nailed it though. For our third and final spot is Ula. This is actually really representative of a whole new generation. It's got a completely different vibe. They play hip hop. They have a lot of streetwear influences, but they also still serve very traditional dishes. Let's check it out. Is there anything special about this? Yeah, it has a very good smoky flavor of it. Okay, so when you're ready for another round, you can do the hot water. We are inside of Hulu, English name, Ula but it's actually Hulu still in Chinese. They had to reverse the name because Hulu, they copy wrote it first. But right now we got to start off with the hype tea. The traditional steps, you have to pour the hot water into the teapot. You Ooh. pour the teapot 
through the sifter, and then you pour the tea into a drink. That is cup. some deep osmanthus. We're looking at a tea shaped like a goldfish. David, that is so artistic, guys. The owners from here, they're very much into art and fashion. Mm. Their handmade cheese foam, it's almost like artisanal handmade cheese. Guys, I do want to remind you, this is classified still as a tea room, so their tea is on point. This extra aromatic strong oolong with the handmade cheese foam was delicious. That was the best one I've ever had. The dim sums have started to arrive. We're looking at a mini pumpkin puff, but really on the inside, it has salted egg yolk. Oh, you're about to just eat that oh. like an exploding tennis ball. Wow. Eat that like a shalom bao. Wow. They have incredibly unique looking dim sum here. Andrew, we are getting into the aesthetically focused hype beast dim sum. We have an assortment of different flavors. They are color coded. I've got the spicy mala in there, Andrew. I've never seen a shalom bao with a center like that. I'm gonna go with the black truffle one. Oh, it's hot. Spicy? I hit the core. I have salted egg yolk in the middle of that shalom bao. Look how they have carefully crafted this. The handwork is incredible here. This is some of the most fanciest shallow bows I've ever had in my life. Next, we have our dim sum platter, and this really goes back to the roots of this spot, which is a tea room. This is the classic siumai. Topped off with caviar. This is a very common way to elevate a siumai. I'll try the hagao next. This corn chiozel fun call definitely had some interesting flavor profiles to it. I'm interested to try this one. It looks like a little pumpkin. Wow. Would you agree, Andrew, that uh, pig's feet are highly underrated in the, because there's nothing funky about them? If everybody ate pig's feet this way, I think there would be no debate. That pig's feet is good. It's very thick, it's spicy, has that soft tendon vibe. We're looking at the Baba Fan, which is eight treasure rice. So they put holes inside of the sticky rice so that all the filling could fall into it. And just a minute ago, this whole thing was on fire. Yo, that sticky rice, really good. It has a very natural, like, syrup flavor. It doesn't taste like just sugar or anything like that. It's so well done here. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm going in for another piece, man. It's the holidays. Carbs be damned. Yo, I'm going in for, uh, I'm gonna mix the pig trotters on top. Wow. Uh, I know I'm crazy. Pig trotters and sticky rice. Mmm. Andrew, they have some dishes you would not expect to find at a really fancy place like this. Neuro Jimby. Mm, this beef is so tender and the sauce is so sweet that it almost tastes like Peking beef instead of raised beef. We have to finish the savory section off with some peeled tomatoes and plum sauce. And of course, the Peking duck. This is a brown sugar glazed Peking duck. So it's yes. gonna have an extra layer of sweetness, guys. I am going to predict that this tastes different because the brown sugar is gonna give it a totally different flavor profile, way stronger in a direction, but I think I'm gonna like it. And you made quite the wrap. I really enjoy restaurants owned by, you know, younger, cool people. That's all I got to say, guys. And by the way, guys, I just had some of these raw tomatoes dipped in plum sauce, Andrew. These taste like fresh versions of that plum candy that you eat at the store that's dried up. Andrew, of course, one of the hallmark traits of having an elevated spot are fancy desserts. Are you specifically a lava cake person? I, it's very hit or miss to me. Ooh, oh, wow, that's a little different. It was not a double chocolate. Oh, 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 don't. Oh, I've saved the leaf. Oh, yes. Chocolate lava cake. Oh, David, I think this cake here is as rich as some of the people who eat here. <laughs> Our second dessert, it is lychee rose panna cotta. And it looks like crop circles. Lychee rose panna cotta. Oh. The lava cake's easier to eat because it's chocolate, but in terms of like blowing my mind, mm. this actually takes the cake. Last but not least, we've got Hulu's version of Bing Fun. And the Bing Fun came in the form of jelly strips, ah. not just gigantic pieces of jelly. That has a very strong rice wine flavor right there. Not as sweet as the Bing Fun I'm used to having, and a lot more of that wine flavor. So that was a nice thing to cap off the meal. What was your favorite thing? I'm gonna have to go with that oolong tea with the cheese foam on top that's freshly made. As far as food, I'm gonna have to go with the colorful rainbow shalom bows with different flavors inside. Those were amazing. The savory dish I'm gonna pick is the pig trotters. Whoa. And that's a must get in my opinion. 
right, you guys, that does it for our elevated Chinese concept themed restaurant. Andrew, what was your major takeaway? I feel like at a time, all the expensive Chinese restaurants felt and looked the same and even may have served similar food, but now they are serving different foods. They have different vibes, different music. Now you really get to choose your own style. Right, do you want the hype beast theme? Do you want the royal theme? Do you want the ancient 1,000 years ago theme? They're here but it's on us to also be patrons and experience that. With the presence of expensive Chinese restaurants, the price of Chinese food overall is gonna go up. I don't think that's true. David, do you think some of our Asian American friends might even feel apprehensive about trying some of these spots? Just yeah. knowing that Chinese food can be so cheap and maybe it feels like some of these spots are not meant for them. Listen guys, you can get a pig trotter for pretty cheap, but you cannot get one that's deboned and that tastes that good. Hey. You can get a pizza slice for a dollar, or you can also go to Lombardi's and get a pizza for $35. I'm just saying guys, there's a lot of different levels of French food, there's different levels of Italian food, and there are many, many, many different levels of Chinese food. In fact, I'm just glad that this level's here because I like enjoying them. Please make sure you let us know what you think of this whole 2020 modern wave of elevated Chinese restaurants. And until next time, we're out. Peace. Are we dressed properly or underdressed? You what guys, you come on. You, you, you're the fun brothers. <laughs> you can dress anywhere you I want. I saw elegant casual uh, on the dress code, so I no, didn't know. No.